Creation. Destruction. Order and chaos, war and peace, death and rebirth. These contradictions permeate the world of Akira, and they embody my interpretation of its philosophy about the principles of human nature, how creation and destruction are the most fundamental elements of our species. On a cellular level, humans consistently create and destroy through mitosis and apoptosis. It's built into our DNA. And so the human condition is the bout of these forces within ourselves and how we exert them onto the world around us. The entire world of Akira is a canvas boasting the marvels of human creation from elaborate laboratory complexes with massive hydraulic elevators and giant freezer chambers to futuristic satellites that can shoot space lasers. The set pieces of Akira are spectacles that are meant to awe, and they're especially awe-inspiring because they are spectacles manufactured by human deliberation. The constructions of Akira possess a sense of realism and credibility due to their man-made nature. And this credibility is further enhanced by the fact that they are indeed literally man-made on pieces of paper in comics and animation. While massive hydraulic elevators are indeed scientifically advanced creations, they are equally impressive as artistic creations as well. Akira is a landmark movie celebrated for its flawless execution of obsessively intricate animation. Many frames of Akira have dizzyingly elaborate schemes of labyrinthine interlocking pipes and wires sprawling across the entire screen. This attention to detail is also present in the manga, and arguably to an even greater degree. And so the technical merit of Akira's art and animation is fundamentally integrated into its story. The richness of its illustrations translate to the majesty of its fictional technological inventions. For example, because the hydraulic elevator is so meticulously hand-drawn, it conveys a sense that it must have taken intense levels of human effort to actually architect and build the elevator within the fictional universe. Akira is a collaboration between art and story, forging a testament to creation. And so it is often terrifying when these testaments are torn down in a matter of seconds. Destruction. I first watched Akira almost eight years ago as a sophomore in high school. And when I did, my initial reaction was, man, that movie looked really cool, but what the heck was it about? Because the story of Akira is a behemoth to consume. There are so many moving parts thrust onto the viewer at once, and the motivations of characters are often vague and abstract. But after having rewatched this movie many times, and having read the manga, and letting its imagery and themes broil in my subconscious for many years, I can't wait to finally consolidate all my thoughts into one video. My personal interpretation of Akira is that it is a story obsessed with human ability, with our awe-inspiring abilities to create and our terrifying tendencies to destroy. Creation and destruction are invariable facets of human nature that are at direct odds with each other. But despite the often oppressive and plainly dystopian tone of the film, I think Akira is ultimately, after an exhausting destructive journey, optimistic about the eventual triumph of creation. As for why I think this, I will explain in this video essay where I will closely analyze various scenes of the movie by deconstructing each scene into elements that support my thesis 
on Akira's deep association with creation and destruction. I will primarily use evidence from the movie, but I do believe that all my thoughts pertaining to Akira in this essay apply to both the movie and the manga. Because while the manga is a more robust and comprehensive story that extends the plot of the movie, I believe that the fundamental morals and philosophies that underlie both works are the same. And so, without further ado, I present my anime analysis, Akira, the art of creation. Or, the philosophy of Akira told from a humanist perspective. The opening shot of Akira pans over an astoundingly detailed scrawl of 1988 Tokyo. Already with the first frame, we are introduced to Katsuhiro Otomo's signature style, r slash city porn. This single drawing has literally thousands of buildings drawn down to the individual windows, and you can tell this was all handmade. This drawing alone probably took weeks to make with physical watercolors and paintbrush because this was before computer animation. Right away, the viewer is confronted with the sheer effort it must have taken to build a city. And I feel that this is an effect that only animation can make. If you wanted to make a similar shot in real life by attaching a camera to like a drone and then zooming it out way high into the sky to get a wide pan of the entire city, it would be impressive, but it wouldn't have the same effect. Because in real life, the city was already there. There was no work in creating it. Whereas in Akira's pan, due to animation, every inch of the city was made. It was labored upon for this film. The medium of animation makes labor apparent. It makes the act of creation apparent. And I think that's exactly what Katsuhiro Otomo was going for. He wants the viewer to be transfixed with awe at specifically the act of creation. He wants to make it known that this was something that took a lot of effort to make. And he furthers this want not just by choosing animation to tell his stories, but by how he animates as well. Katsuhiro Otomo's artistic style can be described as having extreme levels of detail, as being very visually dense. But that's just the what of his style. More importantly, what is the why? My hypothesis is that Otomo makes a choice to highlight the most granular details, the windows, the pipes, the wires, because pieces are representative of the process of making a whole, because pieces are eventually put together. And so the emotions thrust upon the viewer when viewing so many individual pieces up close are, wow, that took a lot of work. There's so much stuff. And the viewer also wonders, how do all these pieces fit together to make a complex whole? What planning and building took place? Sheer effort and then ingenuity of design are impressed upon the viewer. Every frame of Akira strives to instill an awareness of these sentiments of effort and ingenuity into the viewer. And these are sentiments associated with creation, but not just any type of creation, human creation. Effort, planning, exertion, labor, design, forethought. These are all distinctly human characteristics because they are the products of intelligence. And Akira is a celebration of intelligence, of power, of human ability, and the best evidence of my claim that Akira is primarily a story about creation is from the discussion Kaneda and Kei have in the prison cell when talking about what Akira might be. 
Kaneda asks, What the hell is this Akira thing you keep talking about? To which K responds, Ryu told me about it once. He said that Akira is absolute energy. Absolute energy, asks Kaneda. After which K says, Humans do all kinds of things in their lifetime, right? Discovering things, building things. Things like houses, motorcycles, bridges, cities, and rockets. All that knowledge and energy, where do you suppose it comes from? This is the most direct conversation the movie has about what Akira might be. And right away, the first thing Kay mentions is specifically building things. And then Kay specifically lists out man-made constructions. Akira is purported to be some sort of manifestation of energy that guides all living things. But the most important thing in relation to this energy is the first thing described, the ability to create. And the creations of Akira are indeed plentiful and vivid. Cities, bridges, space satellites, laser guns, and motorcycles. One of the most iconic machines in not just Akira, but in anime and the sci-fi genre as a whole, is Kaneda's motorcycle. Its polished design and bold red color pops out in every scene it appears in because it looks really cool. And the reason it looks cool is because it was well designed, it was well drawn, it was well imagined, it was well made. The moment we're introduced to the bike, the first thing we hear is Tetsuo describing the pieces used to make the bike. Twin ceramic rotor drives on each wheel? computer-controlled anti-lock brakes, 200 horsepower at 12,000 RPM, already the film is highlighting the pieces and processes of manufacture. Kaneda then stresses this point by saying, that bike's been customized just for me. It's too wild. You couldn't handle it. Kaneda customized this bike. He helped build and craft this bike. And thus, it is his bike. The most important quality about this bike that helps it reinforce Akira's themes is that the bike is Kaneda's creation. The motorcycle is an example of individual creation. But what about on a larger scale, on a communal level? What is humanity's greatest creation in Akira? Neo Tokyo is about to explode. This is the tagline used in many advertisements for Akira. It's never said in the movie itself, but it is such a clever tagline. Explode. First, there's the obvious connection between the word explode and the many destructive sequences of Akira, including literal explosions. Akira is very fixated on explosions. Tokyo and Neo Tokyo blow up many times in the movie and the manga. And there's also the connotation of figurative explosions as well. Neo Tokyo is a hotbed of teenage angst and political unrest, and it's all teeming at the edge, about to unravel or explode. But it's more than just that. The movie Akira was released in 1988, while the manga was first published even earlier in 1982. And so it's important to note how, in the 1980s, the cyberpunk genre was still in the midst of defining itself, and also how anime itself was not yet popularized in Western or mainstream culture. Even the concept of animation in general dealing with mature themes was mostly foreign as well. And so Neo Tokyo, as a premise, is the first of its kind, never before seen. Neo Tokyo is more than just a city. It is the backdrop of the entire movie, and so as an entity, it encompasses all of the film's creation. And so when the tagline says, Neo Tokyo is about to explode, it means that the viewer is about to be immersed into a new genre-defining universe. The viewer will have their sensors overloaded with visionary urban engineering, as up to seven towering layers of city backgrounds move simultaneously above the characters. The viewer will be introduced to the cult of Akira, to the metaphysical concepts he represents. The viewer will be introduced to anime, 
and the viewer will be transported to what feels like a novel yet structurally defined city. Neo Tokyo feels like it exists. From the very first pans of the neon lights in the opening motorcycle scene, Neo Tokyo establishes its visual identity, which evolves into a comprehensive cultural identity that continues to unfold throughout the movie. Neo Tokyo is more than just the name of a fictional city. It is a lens into the bounds of industrial achievement and the sociopolitical dangers involved. It is a metaphor for the geopolitical context of 1980s Japan, and it is an embodiment of Katsuhiro Otomo's philosophies of human nature, how certain flaws will still be integrated into our most advanced societies. And so the onslaught of mind-bending innovation and perversions in architecture, society, and creation, all of this manifests into the metropolitan conglomerate that is Neo-Tokyo. And it will be so overwhelming that it will feel like an explosion. Going back to the opening shot of 1988 Tokyo, it is impressive how everything is so painstakingly and meticulously drawn. But what should be noted is that this is specifically 1988 Tokyo. 1988 is the year the movie Akira was originally released in Japan. And so the opening shot was purposely tied to present day Tokyo. Neo Tokyo is a spectacle of futuristic creation, but its guiles are rooted in real world society. And so the opening shot can be seen as an ode to present day creation, highlighting the beauty that can already be found in regular life 1980s Japan before unveiling the boundless potential it can further achieve. Which is why it's fascinating that everything is immediately destroyed by an explosion. Again, the context of 1988 is important to note. In 1988, in the non-fictional universe, the Berlin Wall was still standing, the Cold War still ongoing, and the threat of nuclear war imminent. While crisis was narrowly averted in real life, in the fictional universe of Akira, the trigger was pulled and the narrative explicitly states that World War III soon followed. The ideologies that supply the events of Akira are closely embedded in history. Akira is less a work of pure fiction as it is a reflection of the cultural consciousness of Japan emerging as an economic superpower in the politically charged 1980s. And Neo Tokyo is the projection of this reality. When 1988 Tokyo explodes in the ensuing flash of light, for a brief instant, you can almost make out the countenance of a baby, seared in blood. Baby imagery is quite prominent in Akira. The night terror dream parade of toys and pools of milk is indicative of infanthood. Tetsuo's giant mutating baby transformation is also indicative of a weird type of infanthood. And my interpretation of the baby imagery is that it's a grotesque metaphor for creation. Babies are symbolic of the beginning of life, and thus they can be seen as the purest representation of creation. And so, after the flash of light and the brief silhouette of a baby's face, the baby's face then morphs into an overview of a city, which is revealed to be Neo Tokyo 31 years later. Neo Tokyo is the ultimate postmodern creation. It was born like a baby from the crater of destruction. It is a testament to how the human intellect cannot be subdued. It bears shelter to the ingenuity of human inventions, but also the terror of their weaponizations. It simultaneously symbolizes what modern day Tokyo already is and what it can become. It is the culmination of human excellence but also of human impropriety. It is the product of order and chaos, war and peace, death and rebirth. And that's because it is just one of Akira's many artistic realizations of the most fundamental facets of human nature, creation and destruction. <laughs>